Hey everybody, good to see you guys today. So quarantine and Christians, what to do during the coronavirus quarantine time? What do you do on lock lockdown? What, what do you do? You are like a prisoner? What do you do? <laughs> I know a lot of people have these questions. And, you know, I'm speaking specifically to believers. Um, man, there's so many things that we can do and so many things that we should not do. So today I'm going to be telling you some things that are going to be very important for you to start doing um, during this quarantine time and very important things um, that you should not do right that a lot of people are doing so we got to be very careful so i'm going to start with the don'ts and then i'm going to give you a few do's after that okay so um if you don't know who i am my name is nick um let's grow in christ this is what i'm about i love equipping the saints for the work of ministry i love helping believers um grow in their relationship with god grow in christ grow and mature um in, in their knowledge of the word of god and what it is to live a christian life and how to follow christ um biblically so this is what we're about okay so so i hope this blesses you i hope this helps you what to do as a christian during quarantine so the first thing that I would advise you to not do um, is to don't not give is to not give yourself over to entertainment. Um, don't give yourself over to, to just watching TV all day, binge watching Netflix series and series and movies and and things online and YouTube videos and stuff like that. Other than than these, you know, <laughs> other than videos that are, are going to help you grow um, in your faith and your love for God and your service to God and in your obedience to God. Amen. Um, don't don't give yourself over to entertainment. You know, don't give yourself over to just you know be on the couch all day watching movies, hanging out, chilling, acting like because you're no longer working right now, or because you can't go outside and hang out and be busy, 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 busy all the time that you have like your life is over. Like if 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 you you have nothing to do because you're not working and you're not hanging out, then that's a sure sign that. <laughs> you weren't really living for God, right? That you didn't really have that real commitment and devotion to knowing God, growing in his word and uh, and living for him and serving him, you know? So that, that might be a bad sign. I don't know if that's you or not. Um, but if you find yourself like, hey, I don't have to work. You know, we're not hanging out. We're not taking the kids to soccer practice. Then I just watch TV all day. Well, then that that means that before this quarantine, you probably weren't spending, um, you know, hours knowing God, growing in His Word, and, and serving Him, right? Spreading the gospel to others, you know, talking to people about His Word, and you know, growing with other saints and stuff like that, or calling, you know, that that friend or that old friend or that person that you know needs to hear the gospel. So make sure you don't give yourself over to entertainment and things like that, or or to food, you know, just to make your whole day about what you're gonna eat and cooking and all these recipes and looking up recipes on YouTube and let's cook and let's do this and, and just making yourself busy um, just by watching things or or you know just listening to music all day um, you know old school songs and a lot of stuff that I see people are doing during their quarantine it's like come on guys like we got to remember that Life is not about us. We're not Christians for us. We don't live for us. Christianity is following Jesus to do the will of God, to know him and serve him, make him known. Amen. So, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm not saying don't never watch TV, never cook and spice things up and look for new recipes and never, you know, listen to some music and hang out with your wife or with your husband and stuff. I'm not saying don't do that. What I'm saying is don't make your time about that. Make your time about growing and knowing, um, growing in God and knowing God, right? About living the Christian life, even though you're at home. 
You guys got me? You guys, you guys understand where I'm coming from? So don't make everything about entertainment and food and, and, and just you, you, you. Or let's clean everything. Let's clean the house. Let's clean the garage. Let's clean the car. Let's clean the yard. Let's do this. And you're just busy, busy, busy yourself. And then you wonder why you still feel empty even though you say you're a Christian. You confess Jesus, right? So it's more about, it's more than just a confession. It's more about actually a, actually an actual following of Jesus, you know, following Jesus. You know, Christianity is not just something you you say you do, you say you are. It's it's a lifestyle that you basically surrender yourself to, basically a surrender. Just like when Jesus called Peter, he said, you know, leave that fishing business. Leave all those fish that I just caught for you, all those fish that I put miraculously put on that net. Leave all those things behind and follow me. That's the same call for us. Okay, even though we're even though we're not the uh, you know the first apostles of the church and all that, we're still called followers of Christ. We're still told to deny ourselves, pick up our cross, and follow Jesus. So in the same way, he told you know John and and James right to 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 uh, to leave their father and their business and follow Jesus. Give everything you have to follow Jesus. Follow his example. Follow his teachings. Follow his commands. Follow his way of living. It's the same thing he's telling us. So, you know, just make sure you don't give yourself to entertainment, to food, to cleaning, just to be in a busy body or a lazy body. Just be a Christian body, okay? Number two, don't give yourself to the news. You know, don't, don't watch the news all the time, Facebook news and articles and blogs and, you know, the, the news on TV. Don't don't make your life uh, and don't give your soul over to, to all these news and what's going on with the virus. And what people are saying and the stats and the numbers, conspiracies, conspiracy theories, YouTube, we weird stuff. I don't care if it sounds like it's true or not. Don't give yourself to all this foolish arguing and disputes that are online and what could be and what couldn't be, what's gonna happen. Listen, if you're not if you didn't spend time with the Lord today, if you didn't spend time reading God's word today, if you didn't spend time, you know, uh, somehow spreading the gospel or somehow equipping somebody or helping somebody, sharpening somebody, counseling somebody with the word of God, then you don't have the time to focus on worldly things yet. You know, first, the Bible says, seek God's kingdom and righteousness first, above all else, above all things. And God's going to provide for what you need. But if, if, you know, if we haven't done that and we spend all our time, you know, watching the news, talking about the news, arguing with people because of the news, conspiracy theories, arguments, disputes. And, 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 and then we tell people, oh, yeah, I just didn't have time to spend, spend, um, you know, time in the word. I didn't, I, you know, I, I, didn't, I didn't have time. Um, you know, I was just busy doing important things all day. What? You're home all day, you know. Uh, we, we, we maybe this could help us come come to reality, and and, 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 and it, it can teach us that maybe we've been focusing on the wrong things, even at work. You, you, because at home, now that we have time, that now that a lot of us are not working forty hours a week, guess what? We find ourselves giving ourselves to the food, to the to the friendships, to hanging out, to, to watching movies, watching series, uh, binging on stuff, the news, entertainment, arguments, online debates, everything but God. So it's like, what's really the reason we haven't been living for God? Was it really our jobs? Was it really our busyness? Or did we make ourselves busy because we were interested enough in the Lord? That's I know that's tough, that's challenging, but that's a question we have to ask ourselves. So don't give yourself over to the news, to conspiracies, to arguments, to debates, to disputes. Listen, I'm telling you, this is the perfect time for you to just, you know, it, 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 just sober up, <laughs> disconnect yourself from everything that kept you busy, that hindered you from really serving the Lord and following him and get to know him during this time. So, so that when everything goes back to normal, so that when there's no more lockdown, quarantine, whatever, you have a firm foundation and a routine by knowing God, making sure you know God, you, you get into his word, you renew your mind with the truth, and that you're making life about him and not about yourself or the things and the people of the world, okay? Number three, don't give yourself to all these home workouts and workout obsession and healthy food obsession and all these things that I'm seeing on YouTube. You know, all these Christians are just 
you know, everything they're doing during their quarantine is just making sure they, they get their body uh, looking how they want it to look. Oh, I'm going to make sure I'm working out all these 30 days. I'm working out every day, this and that. And I don't hear these Christians talk about how they're going to make sure they grow in their relationship with God. And that's a big, big problem. That's you focusing on the body, which is flesh, on, on, on looking good, which is temporary, which is worldly, and not focusing on what you're supposed to focus on. Those things that are permanent, that are eternal, the things that have to do with God. Amen. I'm, you know, I'm not saying not to work out. I'm not saying not to, you know, try to try to look good for your spouse or or try to get in shape so that you feel lighter. Feel. I'm not saying not to do that. What I'm saying is, don't get obsessed with that and live for that and make your whole quarantine time about that. Because if you're not making your whole quarantine time about God, there's an issue. Because if you can't live for God and spend time with him when you don't even have a job to go to right now, then you're definitely not going to do so when you have a job to go to, when you have a a gym session to go to, when you have soccer practice for your kids to go to. Like, let's just be realistic. So this is a big, 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 major key right here. This list that I'm giving you right now is going to help you big time to get prepared for the day that you are going to go back to work so that you can already be in a routine and a, in a, in a habit and a, in, a, in a commitment to really live for God from now on. OK, we got to get serious about this. All right. So that was the three don'ts. Don't give yourself to entertainment and food. Don't give yourself to the news, to conspiracies, foolish arguments and disputes online. Don't give yourself to home workouts and focusing on what are you, what, what am I eating? What am I working out? Let's work out like we're in the military. Let's work out like we're in prison. This this all, all about our flesh, all about our body, our looks, vanity, the love of selves. We want people to be impressed with our six pack and all that. That's that's ungodly, right? We shouldn't be consumed with that. Here are the three do's. Number one, get serious about prayer. Make sure when you wake up, if you got something to handle first thing in the morning, like feed your kids or something like that, you know, go ahead and do that first and then go straight to prayer after that. Because if you don't do it, as soon as you wake up, unless you're already in the habit of doing it like at noon or at nighttime or something. But if if you're just trying to get your prayer life started, you have to make sure that you do it um, ASAP because your flesh is going to try to veer you uh, to the other direction. Right. Uh, Something's going to come up. You know, your, your wife's going to ask you to watch the kids later on or or your favorite show is going to come on or, or something's going to happen. So make sure you do it first thing in the morning. Um, if you don't have nothing else to do, just do it first thing in the morning. If you have to feed your kids or or, or whatever, you you know, if you if you work from home, maybe if you have to do your, you know, do your your, your job session or whatever first do that. And then right after that, get into some prayer. If you've, if you've never really had a real prayer life, prayer routine on um, before, then maybe you could start with 15 minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, just spending time with God. Pray like Jesus taught his disciples to pray. Um, you could read that in, in the Gospels. Um, he gave them the, you know, the model of how to pray, what, what kind of things to ask for. The Bible says to, you know, give God thanksgiving, to ask with faith, ask with good intentions, ask unselfishly, ask according to his will and, um, you know, intercede for others and things like that. So, you know, just, you know, I do have a video about prayer too. And uh, maybe I can put that up here um, right now. If I remember to put it up here, it's called um, how to pray properly. Seven things to do in prayer to pray properly. So click on that video. It's going to help you big time if you're just now getting into uh, wanting to develop a prayer life and routine of spending time with the Lord. So definitely get into prayer. That's a big do. That's a big do. Uh, Number two, do get serious about reading God's word. Start spending time reading God's word. If if you're just now starting, maybe maybe start with 20 minutes of reading God's word. If you're just now starting, I mean, I'm I'm not just now starting. I've been reading God's word, but I still read it very slowly. So you might want to try to read it very slowly because it's not about quantity. It's about quality, right? It's about you actually understanding what you're reading and allowing yourself to process what you're seeing so that you don't forget it. And so that, you you know, you, you can you can re, you can see and recognize what is being said in the context of it. You want to know why these scriptures say these things. You don't just want to get one scripture and run with it. We, you want to know the whole context and story behind everything. Right. So I recommend at least maybe like 20 minutes. If you're just now starting out, I recommend reading slowly. I recommend reading a a translation that's not 
that's not too like figurative, um, you know, figurative speech based or, or, or commentary based or paraphrase based. Um, and also not one that you're not even going to understand because it's like, oh, King James and stuff like that. Like you, you don't even know what they're saying. Thou, thy, woo, thou is, you know, get something that you're going to understand, but don't get something that's like too, uh, too much of a paraphrase uh, from somebody. Um, so, you know, I, what I, I read the New King James Version. If I'm not reading the New King James Version, I'll read the ESV or I'll read the NASB. Um, sometimes I like reading the NLT too. Um, if I want to get like a, a a good understanding of of the definitions of, of, of the words that are being said, then I'll read the Amplified Version. Um, so, you know, I recommend those if you're just now starting out. Number three, and the very last thing I'm going to mention here, do get closer to your spouse, um, to your kids during this time. You know, I know a lot of times, you know, because of work or because of, you know, again, soccer practice or, or English class or Spanish class or whatever we we do on the regular gym right after work, things like that. Because of those things, we're kind of always in a rush and running around and busy. And sometimes we don't have time to really spend quality time with our loved ones. So maybe this could be a good time for you to get closer with the Lord first. And then also with your wife or with your husband. Um, if you have children, get closer with your children, spend time with them, watch them play, you know, um, play with them, you know, do all the things that, that you, you, you liked when you were a kid, or you would have liked if you would have had, you know, attentive, um, caring parents around, um, do, do those things things with them um and um if you know if, if if you're a mom um you know teach spend this time teaching them the word of god start discipling your children that's your duty right start discipling your children start start showing them how to do things according to what the bible says teach them how to forgive teach them how to not be envious and jealous of you know their brother or their sister or, or their friends teach them how to not to take people's toys like start teaching them you know how to how to follow Jesus' teachings, you know? Um, if you're a husband, start teaching your wife the Word of God. Start teaching your kids the Word of God, you know? Um, set up a, a Bible study every night or every other night or uh, once a week. And then every night, maybe a little short 10-minute devotional. Read a devotional with them, you know? There's plenty of devotionals you can buy online on Amazon. Um, or maybe you could check out our blog. We have blogs that we talk about real, important, relevant topics with ap- applicable biblical um, answers and in in, in, in advice and, and counsel that we have so maybe you could check out our blog and, and, and use those to um to um to have a devotional time with your family i think that'll be good so use this time to spend with your family and to teach them word of god, the word of god as a as a husband or as a father definitely use this time to learn how to disciple them and teach them god's word um so that's my you know that's my best advice for you guys and how to deal with quarantine and lockdown and in and, and the coronavirus right now as a christian you know just don't give yourself to these things and give yourself to these last three things i mentioned and, and you'll be all right you'll be more than all right i guarantee it if this video helped you um leave a comment like the video share it um on, on your social media um if uh, you like what we're bringing to the table here I'll go ahead and subscribe to our channel we're going to continue coming out with content um, either you know uh, every day or at least three four times a week um, you know definitely at least weekly we're going to be coming out with stuff so that we can help as many believers that are out here on, in the YouTube world grow as possible so um, go ahead and subscribe uh, we're going to keep content coming out and all the links to, to everything is on, in the description below we have blogs we have Christian shirts, uh, Let's Grow in Christ shirts, free prayer shirts so that you can, you know, evangelize and represent Jesus wherever you go, offer free prayer to people wherever you go. Um, we have, um, of course, this YouTube channel you can stay hooked up with um, with us on. Uh, we have Facebook, Instagram. Um, we have our online Bible studies. This is, this is so important. Online Bible studies for everybody who um, hasn't been able to make it to church or everybody who hasn't hasn't really found a place where they can grow, um, uh, a place where they really get discipled. Our online Bible studies through Zoom are very powerful. I'm telling you, we get into the word of God. We, we have conversations about the text. People ask questions, whether it's basic questions or super deep and complicated questions. And we just try our best to allow the Lord to speak through us. And we go to the scriptures and the word and, and we just allow the Lord to, to sharpen us um, through each other. Um, 
I mean, I lead those. My wife is on there as well. So you will be able to see us face to face live. We'll be able to see you if, if you allow it. If not, you can just keep your camera off. It doesn't matter. But go ahead and sign up for online Bible studies. They're completely free. You just got to click the link um, below in the description box and it'll um, send you the Zoom meeting ID and the meeting code as soon as you sign up. Um, and it's, a, on, it's every Tuesday night at 7 p.m. Eastern time. And on Monday, on Monday, it's going to send you an email reminding you of the Tuesday Bible study. But it's also going to send you an email with the text that we're going to be reading so you, you can prepare if you want to for it. Okay, so I definitely suggest that if you want to grow in Christ. So grow with us as we grow with God. Amen. Love you guys. Thank you for watching this. And you guys have a great day. Have a great quarantine time. Don't get depressed. Don't get discouraged. Don't, you know, get lost in the entertainment world or the news world or the food world or the workout world or the, or the you know, let's just clean everything world. Like, really get to know God and grow relationships growing your relationship with God during this time because that's what your life is supposed to be all about anyway as a believer as a Christian amen bless you guys take care